Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope uh, all of you had a wonderful Deepavali and uh, uh, many other festivals, Govardhan Puja and uh, Bhai Dewis. So welcome to ISU Masterclass uh, in yet another uh, edition. Uh, last uh, one week, we did not do Masterclass because of festival. So our apology for that. Uh, now we have one other Masterclass today. And, and this is one of the very important topics, uh, which is a favorite of uh, all gastroenterologists, that how do you approach a patient who had a obstructive jaundice or extrahepatic uh, biliary obstruction? And this is one of the very important topic you see these patients every day in your outpatient, not only outpatient, but also this is one of the very favorite topic in the examination. I think uh, all of you will get one case of uh, extrahepatic biliary obstruction out of three or four as per institution rule in your DM or DNB exit examination. So to focus on this topic, we thought we must have a one masterclass on this uh, very important topic. How do you, uh, and how do you differentiate? How do you approach? How do you investigate these patients and the planning of management? So to do that uh, today, we have a three very eminent uh, uh, faculty of our country, uh, including Dr. S.P. Misra. Uh, we, we all know Dr. S.P. Misra is a professor and head of gastroenterology at uh, uh, Motilal Nehru uh, uh, Institute or a hospital in Allahabad. And he had been the Secretary General of ISC. He had been the President of ISC. We have Dr. Uh, welcome Dr. Misra. Uh, we have Dr. Vivek Saraswat. And all of us know that uh, Dr. Saraswat uh, has been a head of gastroenterology at SGPGI Lucknow. But uh, after completing his uh, tenure there, uh, I'd say, uh, 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 at SGPGI, now he moved to Jaipur, and present, presently he is the director of uh, the Part of Gastroenterology at Mahatma Gandhi uh, Institute, Mahatma Gandhi Hospital, Medical College and Hospital at Jaipur. Uh, and he had been the president of uh, Inazal and ISC, a uh, very astute teacher. So welcome, Dr. Saraswat. Dr. Saraswat is traveling and look at uh, his passion. Uh, he's at this point at the airport and they're still joining. Uh, because of some season flights, so the time got changed, but he will join for some time and probably have to, he will have to leave in between the case. Uh, we have Dr. Manu Tandon, and we know that uh, Dr. Manu Tandon is one of the top class uh, uh, teacher uh, at, uh, and Dr. Manu Tandon is uh, at the AIG uh, Hyderabad. Uh, we all know all the our faculty members, uh, and and uh, uh, this this week the case has come from uh, AIG Hyderabad. So may I request Dr. Manu to introduce uh, both the students. And before uh, we do that, we have a, uh, uh, for today's uh, masterclass uh, facilitator is Dr. Manas Panigrahi. Manas Panigrahi is, is a very dynamic, and I would say star uh, person. He is at uh, Ames Bhavaneshwar and he's associate professor. So he, he, will, he will run the case today and help us in conducting this masterclass. Over to all the faculty members, but first to Dr. Tandon to introduce uh, two of the students. And all please, uh, please uh, write your questions on the chat box and uh, all the faculty will, will try to take all these questions in the masterclass. Over to all the faculty, Dr. Tandon, please. Thanks, Govind. And I think uh, on behalf of the entire faculty, Vivek, uh, as he told, is going to leave us a little shortly for reasons beyond his control, this boarding time is nearing. SP Mishra is there, Manas is there. I, we would like to thank you for giving us this privilege and I on behalf of the Asian Institute, am grateful that ISG has given an opportunity to our residents. We have two residents, both of them in their final year. They'll be taking their exam in the coming year. Dr. Maharishi and Dr. Adesh, both of them you can spot on the same screen, they are, we have two hospitals of AIG. They are sitting in the library of the, the newer building and from which they will present their cases, which will be monitored through Dr. Manas. This, as Govind has already told you, is a case of extrahepatic biliary obstructions. And between the three of us and Manas, we will try our best to clarify things as the case proceeds. So. We are ready and we are ready to start on. Manas, you would like to say something or you straight away hand over to the registrars? Uh, 
straight away i will show the presentation share the slide sir and hand over to the registrar there the slides slides are visible yes sir good morning everyone myself dr sachi maharshi i am going to present about uh, clinical history of this case go ahead go ahead next slide yes it is not moving just a minute let and me lo load again please manas okay okay sir. just i'm stopping sharing and again i am sharing don't worry it's not again it will yeah is it visible sir yes yes sir. yes sir. Is is a dr maharshi please go ahead is a 40 year old gentleman a uh, resident of assam who is a health counselor uh, studied up to graduation history is informant himself sir which is reliable admitted to our hospital with chief complaints of yellowish discoloration of eyes and skin since 6 weeks and generalized itching since 5 weeks sir. next slide i'm not seeing the next slide please uh, marshi yes yeah. uh, yes now we will the next slide go ahead yes. Uh, coming to the history of present illness, patient was as apparently symptom asymptomatic six weeks ago, sir, when he developed this LH discoloration of eyes and skin, which was initially noted by the family members, and this is incidence in onset gradually progressive to present day. Sir. This jaundice is also associated with high colored urine, pale colored and pale colored stools, and is also associated with generalized itching, sir. This itching is more towards the evening hours, and you can rate it as severity grade two to three, sir. which is interfering with the daily activities and sleep and is predominantly over extremities and backs patient also had a history of easy fatigability and he also gives the history of loss of appetite and weight loss of 7 kg over 6 weeks however he had, he had not given any history of no history of prodrome prior to the onset of jaundice and there is also no history of alternate medication intake prior to the onset of jaundice sir and this jaundice is also not associated with altered sensorium mm, there is no history of pain abdomen associated with this jaundice uh, there is no history of abdominal distension or awareness of lump abdomen and there is no history of hematemesis or melina uh, uh, no there is no history of fever and night sweats we asked the history of any history of passage of oily stools or difficulty in flushing stool however there is no history there is no history of joint pain skin rashes flushing or episodic wheeze and there is no history of polyuria or polydipsia and there is no history of altered bowel habits or blood in stools there is no history of shortness of breath and decrease urine output there is no history of tattooing or blood transfusion coming to the past history is a known case of hypertensive uh, on regular medication however there is no history of similar complaints of jaundice in the past and no history of surgeries coming to the treatment history he was evaluated in assam medical college for which uh, with the history of jaundice and for which he was advised blood investigations ultrasound abdomen and followed by mri with mrcp which i will discuss in the which we will discuss in the later slides and he was managed conservatively sir and he was not on any prolonged medications except for tablet telmisartan 20 mg once daily for 2 years and there is no history of any endoscopic interventions coming to the personal history he denies history of alcohol consumption of smoking he takes mixed diet uh, currently he was taking uh, 1200 kilo calories per day sir with deficit of 800 uh, kilo calories per day and protein intake he was taking 30 grams per day with a deficit of 35 grams per day according to his weight of 65 to 66 kg no history of high risk behavior coming to the family history there are no similar complaints in the family no history of gallstones or any they also there is no history of any other malignancy in the family and father expert at the age of 72 with natural causes I agree. However, the bond and non-consensus marriage, none of the family members are affected. Sir. To summarize my case, this is a 42-year-old male who is a known case of hyper, with a comorbidity of hypertension, without any addictions, 
presented with insidious onset painless progressive jaundice with generalized pruritus pale colored stools and significant weight loss since 6 weeks in the absence of prodromal symptoms with ecoc performance status of 0 sir so uh, sir uh, with the poll question So the, this is 42-year male with a history of painless progressive jaundice and weight loss. These are the four options. Let's see how our audience is responding. So uh, um, our poll results are most of the audience are gone with cholangiocarcinoma 45% and then ampullary carcinoma 25% and then carcinoma hydrocanthias that is 23% and carcinoma gb that is 8% so mm -hmm. now uh, uh, manas yes. before we go on with this poll and always, i think they have a few basic things that i'd like to bring up yes sir uh, please dr go. mahashi and uh, dr might address it. See, you have already decided it is extrahepatic biliary obstruction. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Sir, please sir. go. Uh, SP, mute. You are you muted. Can you hear me or uh, what? Yeah. No, so the question is, how have you ruled out intrahepatic cholestasis on history? We haven't examined the patient. You have taken the history here. So straight away to jump to a differential intrahepatic obstruction. Uh, what are the points in this patient by which you say that this is definitely extrahepatic cholestasis and not intrahepatic cholestasis? Manas, can, you go, painless, back a, can you go, back, is, go back a slide, please? Yes, sir. Yes. His slide. This was your poll question. Yes. Sir. So summary, can you go back to summary, please? Summary, yeah. Yes, sir. So basically, it's painless, progressive jaundice. There is no fever. There is no uh, history of cholangitis, no surgery, no interventions. So no, no hard also. pointer in favor. Vivek, Vivek, he did not put his neck out. It was Manas who came to the pole cushion. He, he has not <laughs> told you the diagnosis yet. No, no, that's fine. I think this is for the benefit of the audience that when you have a history, what you have is jaundice. You have polystatic jaundice because there is itching, there is pruritus, pale stools. But the, uh, maybe somebody can recap what are the typical differentiating points. It said the intrahepatic cholestasis, there will be history of prodrome, sir, or any history of drug intake or any other similar history in the family, sir, which are not there in this case. There are no prodromal yes. symptoms, no history of any drug intake or CAM, and no similar history in the family. Sir. So you can have an intrahepatic malignancy. Nice. Intrahepatic malignancy, no pain, 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 painless, sir. It's, it's a painless jaundice. Intrahepatic malignancy can have painful, sir. No, no, just pain. Just the basis of pain, you can't say. You can't have, not necessary, you may have uh, pain in intrahepatic malignancies. Yes. Uh, Jayanti has said a question on granulomatous disorders also may present like this. I is think before we take this. the audience poll, uh, Manu, before we start with the audience questions, maybe just let's complete the yes. learning points here yes. for intrahepatic cholestasis versus extrahepatic. If there is pain, so, Satya, one thing is clear that once you have a patient like this, just on the basis of history, you cannot rule out intrahepatic causes. Okay. And only thing is, if you have prodrome and all those things, then you can go with that. And the weight loss is much better. So, you have to reason out why you think this is uh, extrahepatic and not intrahepatic. So, you better reason it out then. Do you have reasons for it? Absence of prodromal symptoms, sir. Okay. No history of intake of CAM, any alternate, uh, alternative medication. Good. Um, the progressive uh, weight loss, sir. Uh, there's a significant weight loss. I would point out that there is, uh, you have not taken a very adequate history of uh, drug intake. 
See, the, we have said no CAM. Now, CAM is not the only drug that causes cholestatic jaundice. Most often, you have allopathic medicines and the history of injection of drugs that could have caused cholestasis. Antibiotics like clavulanic acid, then you would have uh, uh, antimicrobials, antifungals, steroids, anabolic steroids. There's a long list of drugs that cause large actyl neurosedatives and antiepileptics that can cause cholestasis. So we have not, not heard the history of sir. absence of these illnesses. Vivek, can I just put in? I think we are jumping the gun. Satya, what's your diagnosis now? After summary, you give your diagnosis and support it with whatever you have said so far in the history. That's what history wants. So this is this is your diagnosis. Yes. Satya, uh, uh, can likely. we remove this uh, this slide? Uh, Which one, sir? The, the it, present sir. slide, let him go back to his summary and make yes, a call. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. This, uh, there's a slide on the top also, polling question. It's So you, you just cut to... it out. So just cut it out, sir. Just cancel okay. that. The crossover of that is... Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Maharishi. So if you sir. can make a point out, sir. Uh, uh, the commissioner sir, can make a point out here. Uh, the uh, See, this patient, 42 years with six weeks history... Uh, it will be very difficult to exclude uh, intrahepatic cause. Yes. So absence of prodrome or absence of uh, uh, drug history does not exclude because uh, at it 42, points, but does not exclude. Even I agree with that. You keep both so, options open. So to all the re all the residents, uh, see absence of sign uh, does not mean absence of disease, yes. right? So absence of prodrome just tells you there's no hepat no viral hepatitis again. But you know thirty percent of AVH do not have prodrome, classical prodrome. So absence of signs should not always restrict you uh, to restrict from a diagnosis. So keep a broad perspective of both intra and extrahepatic. Certainly you can always choose that the intrahepatic is my first uh, etiology or the first syndrome diagnosis or extrahepatic my first syndrome diagnosis. So uh, it's good to be broad. I think, uh, relatively a soft point here could be that there is a very short interval between onset of jaundice and appearance of pruritus, which is very intense. The high-grade severe pruritus coming so soon after the appearance of jaundice does argue for complete obstruction, which is generally extrahepatic, number one. And number two, if you take uh, 10 patients of cholestatic jaundice, probably seven, eight of them will have extrahepatic cholestasis and only one or two will have intrahepatic cholestasis. So these are relatively soft points that tell you that this is likely to be extrahepatic cholestasis but you are not able to rule out intrahepatic cholestasis. So Completely and intrahepatic so, primarily drug related. Now drugs, you have said no history of prolonged ingestion of drugs, but they can be drugs like somebody, not in this patient, but say uh, otherwise if there's somebody is taking say anabolic steroids. Today, a lot of people go to gyms and take uh, bodybuilding medicines or they take some uh, medication that their trainer gives them and uh, they create problems. So they may or may not, unless you specifically dig for these points, you may find that ingestion of anabolic steroids, ingestion of oral contraceptives and other drugs, not necessarily over a prolonged period, may have been overlooked. So one needs to bear that in mind and that may come as a lower down problem. But overall, as I said, the very short interval between deep significant jaundice and intense pruritus are used for extrahepatic obstruction, as well as the uh, fact that uh, numerically or uh, statistically, extrahepatic cholestasis is definitely commoner than intrahepatic cholestasis. I thought that was uh, worth mentioning here because when you have cholestatic jaundice, the first differentiation is intrahepatic versus extrahepatic, then an extrahepatic benign or malignant, in malignant upper end block or lower end block, and that way you can systematically proceed to differentiate and reach your uh, point. So maybe now we can go ahead with your so, differential. So, so the learning point over here is that on history, Unless and until the patient complains of a mass, it's very difficult to differentiate between the two. Yes, there is pain, there is cholangitis, presence of a mass, or surgery, or say ERCP. ERCP or procedure. All those things would suggest that this could be extrahepatic. In their absence, you are not sure that it is extrahepatic, so you must keep an intrahepatic possibility also. Yes. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. After this, uh, next. 
So uh, this is your differential diagnosis. Yes, sir. Now reason out why did you keep number one as ampullary carcinoma? Your sequence one, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Short history and painless uh, progressive jaundice, sir. Ampullary is uh, relatively slow growing, I thought. I mean, Satya, one thing. Uh, you are giving this uh, as an alibi for not having intrahepatic polysis, that there was no pain. And here you are considering no pain as a possibility uh, for ampullary. You can't have both the things. See, if you look at extrahepatic polystasis, gallbladder and pancreas are generally painful, while cholangiocarcinoma and ampullary carcinoma are often painless. So why plump for ampullary first? Why not cholangiocarcinoma first? What is the of typical the two, on the which will which produce more polyangio? intense jaundice uh, and quite rapid of the two? So for the teaching ampullary purpose? Ampullary presents early, sir. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Chris. Uh, okay. No, it's early. It's all short duration. So I... What is the typical history which you will make you say this must be ampullary carcinoma? Cholangitis, the presence of cholangitis. Number one, number two. Up and down is also there. Fluctuating jaundice. Yes. Absolutely. Fluctuations. Yes, so, cholangitis, fluctuating jaundice, maybe GI bleed. Yes, sir. So called silvery stools, you would have heard. Yes, Polystatic stools where they are not very normally seen. Vivek, it but doesn't no progress so rapidly. It doesn't progress so rapidly here. It is really progressively yes. worsening. And so much of weight loss. So much of weight loss. Yes. So I think uh, ampullary of the two would become a second choice. Anyway, yes. you take a call and give your reasoning. No, one, one more thing. I want to tell the students. Uh, see, he is using a counter argument for not having intrahepatic cholesterol. That was no pain. And he is using the same argument in the opposite way of saying that it's ampullary carcinoma. You can't have the same argument in a differential diagnosis that, that is pain is not there you can't use it for a so you stick to it there's no pain and this is not a possibility right so i mean your first possibilities you have mentioned you probably would cholangiocarcinoma and ampullary now can carcinoma head of pancreas be painless yes sir can carcinoma gallbladder be painless yes sir 30 what, to 40 percent 30 to 40 percent Forty percent. Thirty forty percent. Yeah, HOP seventy percent. Seventy to seventy percent will have will be painful, sir. Thirty thirty percent will be painless. Carcinoma gallbladder sixty to seventy percent will be painful and thirty to forty percent painless. Right. So what is the? And this is for a cohort, not for the one index patient. Yes. Exactly. Yes. But in a given, I mean, what is the frequency of distribution of the different causes? If it's something is ten percent, while something is forty yes, percent. 10% of 40, I mean, 30% of 40% might still be more in frequency. So, what is your understanding in India? What are the usual common yes. causes of what is the breakup of these four conditions? In North India, the carcinoma gallbladder is more common than the Ganges bell. So, predominantly the carcinoma gallbladder followed by pancreatic head cancer, followed by periampillary and uh, cholangias in North India. Whereas in South India, pancreatic cancer uh, followed by periampillary. Followed by cholangia and carcinoma gallbladders. He's from northeast. Yes, sir. He was northeastern. Is there any no. other cause of malignancy that you will consider, uh, Maharishi? You are given four. I think one more you should add as a completion of the list. It may not be in this case since you are listing out. He has no GO, but suppose he had a GO, what yeah, would yeah. have been the cause? Carcinoma deep. No, metastatic lymph nodes we have seen quite often, and the the endosonologist eventually picks it up. You know. Yes. Yeah. Metastatic so, hilar lymph nodes. Yes. Yes, metastatic lymph nodes. Now suppose you have mentioned geo, so I specifically said suppose he had a geo, then the commonest cause would be a portal lymph node there at the porta. So to complete your list may not include in this case, and for teaching. Five causes you should list for malignancy. Elimination one by one we are doing. Manuva, you're right, but GO is also very common with... Uh, yeah, CA pancreas. GB, CA pancreas, anyone. So, a lymph nodal metastasis is a well-known uh, cause yes. of malignant obstruction. Now, amongst the various causes you've mentioned, the order you've mentioned, uh, general uh, free sequence, but do you have any published data from any published series from India? 
there are four or five from north india and there are a couple from south india which give the break yes sir you have sgpj experience and on study vijay sharma sir regarding this incidents yeah yeah sgpj and banaras that's your four series we give you the break up yes. if you the mp sharma series people pop and quote that's about yes. 30% was uh, um, gallbladder pancreas and 28% is pancreas while about 20% is cholangiocarcinoma and 16 17% was ampullary carcinoma so you need to bear that in order because that also has a bearing on how you will list them while painless and painful is nice but when things are very common the other series which up to 40% are gallbladder carcinoma from north india and if about 30% of them are painless then you still would be commoner than ampullary carcinoma so all these statistics when you you basically don't have clinical pointers and when you fall back on numbers then the statistics and the series uh, data is very important you should be comfortably able to quote those and place your patient in that uh, line vivek they have not dissected the history basically just jump to the differential diagnosis yes there be a history examination we haven't talked about history also we haven't dissected the history we haven't talked about yeah the so, my satya you said about the protein right. intake how much was the protein intake the 35 30 grams sir and his weight is 65 65 65 sir. so it is 5.5 grams yeah and he said it's normal it's not normal then it should be 0.8 to 1 He said he said it was deficient by one thirty grams. Yeah, deficient by thirty grams. Yeah, मतलब yeah. putting one gram it used to it should okay, be sixty five. We got thirty five only. Good, then that's fine. I have one basic sure. question, Maharishi. In yeah. in now uh, let us assume this uh, extra hepatic obstruction statistic wise, since uh, Vivek asked statistics. how many are overall benign and how many are malignant i mean uh, you know vivek was just talking about only malignancy i am talking in general of extra hepatic obstruction blind how many turn out to be malignant statistics wise 70% are malignant sir. correct 72 to 75 are malignant and 25 to 28 are benign good go uh, ahead Uh, sorry guys uh, manu okay. Uh, okay. sp yeah. all, the best, all the best all the best all the best safe travel yeah. safe travel yeah. satyan what are the benign causes sir benign causes okay benign biliary strictures sir benign biliary strictures it can be secondary to chronic of, pancreatitis because of what benign strictures because, because of, of chronic what? pancreatitis hmm. or recurrent cholangitis due to cholidoco lithiasis cbd stone surgery post surgical commonness post surgical post lt sir olt and lap coli that's yes, what sp wants and psc 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 igg4 we are beginning to identify psc igg4 uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis leading to distal cbd structure okay. the common three satya marishi are post coli cp and then depending on your state OLT. If you are a center is practicing post and OLT, rarely, and then and you get can IgG four and PSC. Yes, IgG four okay. and rarely you can have tuberculosis and all those things. Yeah, TB yeah. lymph nodes are very common. Portal sister, correct? Jayanti has written. I was coming to that. If you are a liver unit, P portal hypertensive, portal cavernous, or whatever you want to call it. We used to call it bilopathy. This name is too long. good sp shall we move ahead or uh, what so, i just wanted basically to discuss the uh, symptoms and the, the history but we have already passed that no man go ahead please sir i am handle oh. yeah examination and uh, investigations will be told by adesh adesh okay Uh, good morning everyone i'll be continuing with the investigations yeah adesh right. uh, you have heard the questions what is your order now after what vivek and uh, uh, the comments and sp and myself said what is your order of uh, preferences and then let's talk over cholangio will be first sir okay 
second will be uh, I would, uh, because of uh, painless uh, he's a he's, he's from east of the india so Not gb east. painless gb with uh, this thing will be the second according it's to the high. this thing third would be ci head of pancreas and ampullary will be the lowest lowest even statistic wise that is the worst but, but then okay. why cholangio and why not cgb first uh, uh again uh, i would say uh, i have not examined the patient yet but still uh, uh, painless gb is a uh, most of the cases are painful sir and uh, uh, the usually once the uh, uh, jaundice sets in it's already uh, too advanced so he would have had a longer duration of uh, this thing symptoms with significant more significant weight loss so suppose uh, it's the, the moment the neck is involved the cbd will be involved yes we are saying lots yeah, of neck, lots of neck, patients and most six, of them are painless yeah Get next year yes, cbd with uh, neck uh, in the neck can be a probability here sir if i can make a couple of points like if i get a couple of points uh the point number one that uh, although we teach that the fluctuation in perium card syndrome is uh, there yes but again uh, they, once you look at lft report then you can see bilirubin fluctuating from 5 to 6 to 9 to to again back to 3 or 4 but clinically patient will not able to appreciate the fluctuation in his jaundice But for it is very difficult to see that the bilirubin is three or five or seven or nine. Very difficult. So fluctuation, although we teach, but again, I think this is not relevant to talk about fluctuation in periphery carcinoma. If you look at serial LFT, then you could be a bit more sure about that. Yes. Point number one. Point number two that uh, the periphery carcinoma, even if it's a one centimeter tumor, because the tumor at the ampulla itself will lead to obstructive jaundice because uh, you are blocking the duct. Whereas carcinoma of pancreas and carcinoma of gallbladder will take time to reach to CBD from their site of origin. Suppose there's a tumor in the fundus of gallbladder, by the time it reaches neck of gallbladder, as Dr. Mishra said, it will take a lot of time. By the time pain will appear, so is in carcinoma of pancreas. From even for head of pancreas to involve the bile duct, it has to travel to a distance of say about two centimeter, and therefore uh, the tumor will reach two centimeter before they become symptomatic. Whereas in periphery carcinoma and and uh, colangio carcinoma. Tumor will be just one centimeter in size, and still become symptomatic. So, I mean, just to clarify your uh, statement, uh, these were studies done before the uh, advent of ultrasound. Now yes. we are picking them up, you know, and treating them very early. So the delay is not there. Absolutely, Actually, there was a lot of delay was there. Yeah, Jay Jayanti asks a question: Was there any report of the MRCP that was done uh, in the yes, primary sir, hospital? Yes, sir. I'm going to show it. Jayanti, it will come later, so we'll show you see it then. Right. Okay. So on examination, the patient was sitting comfortably on bed. He is moderately built, moderately nourished. BMI about twenty point eight eight. His vital parameters were within uh, normal limits. Yeah. Will you yeah. tell us the relevant features? Uh, if it's normal, we'll skip yes, it. Yes, sir. We'll... He didn't have any fever at on examination. He had deep ictus, uh, nails were shiny. He had scratch mark, uh, scratch marks over the abdomen, back, and extremities. However, he didn't have any pallor, uh, no uh, edema, uh, peripheral edema, uh, no uh, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, clubbing. He didn't have any uh, xanthelasma or xanthomas. There was no axillaries or other uh, peripheral signs of chronic liver disease. JVP was normal, not raised. On systemic examination, uh, the abdomen, uh, the shape was flat. All quadrants of the abdomen were moving uh, well with respiration. There was no localized or uh, generalized distension. The umbilicus was uh, inverted. I didn't see any scars, sinuses, dilated veins, or visible pulsations over the abdomen. On palpation, uh, the abdomen was soft. Uh, there was no tenderness. Uh, liver was palpable two centimeters uh, below the right costal margin. The surface of the liver was smooth. Uh, it was firm in consistency, non-tender, and uh, uh, the edges were sharp. Uh, gallbladder uh, uh, spleen was not palpable. Gallbladder was palpable with uh, rounded borders, soft to firm in consistency. It had a smooth surface and it was mobile uh, side to side. So uh, after this, uh, we have these poll questions. So we know what is uh, Kovacs's law, and all are the exception of Kovacs's law, except that is uh, option one is Oriental cholangiohepatitis, option two is emphysema of gallbladder, Mirage syndrome, and mucosal ulcer. 
let's take the poll question mano one sir, question for you is it coruvathya's law or it remains hypothesis only sir uh, it is uh, it is exactly in 19 uh, 1890 when the coruvathya's yeah. give yeah. their theory they, they, they sign they have uh, seen that key in 189 or or around patient they have yeah, seen yeah. that uh keep uh, when there is uh, palpable gallbladder in no, their no, series no. that uh, i uh, fortunately i know we used to call it hypothesis rather than law you know so i People wanted are to saying sign hypothesis law everything sir okay okay so uh, we were asked that in our exam not in the that is 50 years 40 years ago yes <laughs> and we were asked and we were told hypothesis that's why i wanted to ask you maybe terminology has changed sir so uh, uh, this is okay for poll result uh, audiences around 50 50 oriental cholangiopedetis and empema gallbladder so uh, this end of poll and our answer is uh, oh, just the time sharing it and by most gallbladder will not have uh, Ah, so all are exception uh, except answer is empema of gallbladder so we all know what is coverses love when there is palpable gallbladder in a jaundice patient so unlikely it is due to stone but again it is not uh, always black and white like that because when it is depend upon the time when there is stone disease Usually there is infection and gradually the gallbladder become uh, shrinked, so we could not get the palpable gallbladder. But at times, just like mirizi, mucosal, there is uh, uh, we can get palpable gallbladder in stone disease also. So, Doctor Ades, you can go ahead. So, continuing with the examination on percussion, the liver span was 15 centimeters. There was no uh, free fluid in the form of shift in dullness. Auscultation, the uh, bowel sounds were uh, present. There was no venous hum or bruit. On rect per rectal examination, no mass per, per rectum was uh, felt. Uh, no, uh, gloves were stained with pale colored stools. There was no uh, evidence of any rectal bleed. Uh, other systemic examinations were uh, was uh, essentially normal, sir. so coming to the differential one diagnosis minute, one minute, one minute. basic sir. questions uh, adesh uh, what where do you measure the liver span what is the normal liver span and which study are you quoting for indians so uh, we start measuring the normal liver span from uh, third or fourth intercostal space usually the dullness will start around uh, fifth intercostal space the normal liver span is 9 to 12 cm uh, i am quoting a, a paper from uh, pgi chandigarh sir Uh, 1975. Yeah, uh, somewhere the word mid clavicular line has to come in that. When uh, along, the, along the along the mid clavicular line yeah, in the vertical axis. That is important. You are saying the PGI paper. You have to state the mid clavicular line. Yes. And also in the mid line, the, the left lobe is enlarged. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, as we go laterally uh, around the uh, lower costal margin, we have to slightly uh, move towards the anterior axillary line, sir, to uh, to find the full uh, uh, liver span. Okay, and normal span in that same study which you are quoting nine to twelve centimeters. Sir. Okay, fine. SP, yes, sir. You are uh, uh, well. There's a question: uh, If there is a mass, can you make out is a pancreatic mass or a GB mass clinically? That was a question, sir. So take okay. that, and then you will start questioning you. Sir. Pancreatic marks is usually retroperitoneal, and the uh, uh, visibility usually reduces when the patient tries to uh, is uh, tries to bend forward on a recommend position. GP mass, however, might become uh, uh, might might be the same, and the uh, mobility of uh, normal gallbladder is from side to side, and it moves with respiration along with the liver. so gb mass will be in the gb fossa like in the yes, site will be different in the, in the middle or somewhere, somewhere there so yeah. you can differentiate between the two but sometimes if it is all matted and things are topsy turvy then it will be very different but sir that should not be a problem 
This is a globular mass, you said. Sir. Yeah. So just to add to that, uh, that uh, most of the patient uh, with carcinoma pancreas will not have lump palpable. Only less than 10% yes. is lump palpable because yes. lump to be, from retroperitoneal to become palpable, the tumor has to be too large. And before that, so they are, they are more of more of cystic tumor of pancreas rather than adenocarcinoma pancreas. And that to body and tail of, uh, uh, the mass in the body and tail of pancreas could be larger in size before they become uh, symptomatic in terms of jaundice. So, so the pancreatic mass will be, will be distinctly unusual. Number two, the gallbladder is, uh, as you said, the uh, doctor, uh, Misha said that uh, in GB fossa, it could be soft cystic gallbladder, it could be a, a hard or, or firm gallbladder. So firm gall, gallbladder will will mean that it is a, it may be mitosis that way. Okay. Is this your order, uh, Adesh? That you are, uh, or would you like to modify in the light of our earlier discussions? Uh, Colangio, I will keep it first, sir. Uh, okay. I would still at this point because the gallbladder was palpable. I would put the ampullary as second. Uh, okay. So and, so so now you can say cholangio where? Uh, you have put distal and perihilar. Distal will be first, but if the perihilar is involving the cystic duct or anything, then that also comes into the differential diagnosis. Sir. Distal will be the first uh, differential. Can it be carcinoma gallbladder? Uh, here I uh, found the uh, mobility was preserved and uh, the consistency was uh, uh, soft to firm. Okay, it suppose it will be suppose, neck of the neck of neck the GP might be involved. Yes, neck. You know, like a mucosa. You get a you get a mucosa. The commonest part mucosyl. is the fundus. If it is at the neck, you get a mucosal and you get a CBD yes, obstruction, yes. CHD obstruction. Yes, but the commonest part of the GP to be involved is the fund uh, fundus. Which is seen in sixty percent, so I have kept it uh, uh, last. Third, again, again uh, your index case is an index case, one case. That may be a case sir. report for you then. Sir, sir. Yes, sir. Guess, uh, and all other colleagues, the one other point is to say that uh, we see patient at to one point of time. Yes. But the disease is a spectrum, the full spectrum, right? Sir. So to say that uh, it's not carcinoma gallbladder because the mobility is preserved, are we predicting or are we presuming? That all tumor are there, there are no tumor to an advanced tumor. So the tumor will increase in size uh, with time, and therefore the mobility will also decrease with time. So at given point of time, when patient comes to you, uh, you will not have all the classical features. So we need to keep that in back of mind yes. and always think of a whole spectrum of a disease. If from normal gallbladder uh, to a small lesion, to a lesion progress over time. And then becoming ultimately a full-blown full uh, disease with the involvement of multiple organs. So there's always a long gap between these two. So we need to keep that in mind. And it's not it's not uh, it's not right that we want to be right always, but we should be like to be logical always, yeah. right? Diagnosis may be anything, but again, as Dr. Mr. said, it may be you, you have to. I mean, you can't rule out the Kashma gallbladder as, as such. Again, what uh, Govind said, if you're logical. Uh, Majority of time you'll be right. Okay, so we are uh, somewhere in those three. Now we are putting. Uh, should we go ahead to the investigations or uh, what? SP, we are. We have got forty-five minutes, and so. I think there is a question from Ajit. Will you take it up? Ask him the question. Yeah, the question oriental is, yes, in oriental cholangiohepatitis or an infected mucosal, why the gallbladder uh, is palpable? Oriental cholangiohepatitis, uh, the uh, uh, infestation will be in the CBD, sir. Yes. So it will act like a primary CBD uh, obstruction, like a CBD stone, stone obstruction. An empyema, it will be in the neck. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. For next uh, poll question, we have the percentage of patient presenting with endless jaundice in carcinoma head of pancreas or carcinoma gallbladder. Already we have discussed this, but uh, let's take the poll question. Option one is uh, 60 the cat is out of the bag. 60 to 60 percent, 30 to 40 percent, and 10 to 20 percent. Because can we help? Our pool. 
sir. Yes, sir. It's there. Even so, after we, uh, even even after the cat is out of the bag, some people are. Sir, yes. So yes, majority yes. are right, sir. Around seventy-five percent of the audience are right. So uh, answer is uh, thirty to forty percent again. You show your next slide for the answer, then they will. Yes, yes, sir. This time. We just Manu Bhai, we just discussed it. Uh, I know. Just told it and including, uh, but I don't know how many joined late. So, uh, go to the next slide, sir. So he you. is. Uh, yes, this is the again series from uh, SEBJ group. And they have percentage of patient having painless jaundice in case of CHOP and uh, GB is 30 to 40 percent around. This is published in Advanced Research of Gastroenterology in Hepatology, 2017. So, uh, Dr. Adis, can you go to investigation? We'll move on to the investigations. So, uh, on invest evaluation, he had uh, mild anemia, microcytic, hemoglobin was 9.9. There was no leukocytosis. Platelets were, uh, was, he had mild thrombocytopenia. On LFT, he showed a gradual progressive uh, obstructive pattern of jaundice with bilirubin raising from uh, 4.5 to uh, 19 and uh, mild transaminitis and significant uh, uh, serum alkalis, alkaline phosphatase elevation. This last report is showing a uh, dip just that is in uh, view of upper limit of uh, that is change in the upper limit of uh, normal levels in respective labs. The last uh, value is of uh, AIG, it is upper limit is 120. The other labs upper limit is 300. So there is a progressive uh, obstructive jaundice. Albumin is uh, gradually reducing. Initially, his INR was deranged. It was 2.75, which was corrected with vit vitamin K, uh, 1.22, uh, which turned to 1.22. Renal fu function tests were within normal limits. Uh, viral markers, uh, hepatitis, especially hepatitis B and C, uh, were negative. When was the ultrasound done? Uh, Do you have the date? See, I'm worried about one thing. We have already spent 23 sir. days. The diagnosis was made, getting well, all this doesn't mean uh, right. Doesn't make so sense. between 3rd and 14th, he was in uh, this thing, sir. He was in Assam. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that was the about first about time, that. sir. That time he, he had undergone an ultrasound, sir. When the second report had uh, come of uh, jaundice, he had undergone the ultrasound, which I'm uh, going to tell you next, sir. Okay. Sir. So, what ultrasound was, showed what, the, was, what I was harping on is. We have lost 23 days in between. Sir. That's very important for the patient. Sir. So, uh, ultrasound abdomen showed an enlarged liver. However, the span of the liver was not mentioned uh, with dilated intrahepatic biliary radicals. CHT was poorly outlined. It was uh, documented that uh, they uh, suspected a likely stricture. Galbladder was extended with the normal wall thickness. There was no stones in the galbladder. CA-199 uh, was significantly elevated, more than 1,000. Uh, IgG-4, we have sent from here, sir. The report is still elevated. So this is the MRI after the uh, USG abdomen. He had got it done uh, in Assam with the MRCP. Uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, just for benefit of uh, everyone. Sir. So what we line of tests uh, say that, uh, so this is also important consideration that many places the MRI will not be available. So yeah. rather than going what test was done, what test you like to do and we'll show those tests. Manas only show those tests which uh, was required for this diagnosis of this patient. Yes. Because, so uh, why would you why, why would do IgG4? So let's, let's not leave a uh, wrong impression to all the residents that IgG4 to be done, unless you're thinking of uh, uh, a uh, uh, IgG4-related disorders, then you think of uh, IgG4. So yeah. IgG4 will come low down in the... Yes, sir. it uh, should have the, come after the MRCP, but... Uh, certainly, it's come down lower in the... Sir. But we go by, as the patient develop, uh, uh, we go by the the that uh, algorithm, sir. rather than what is done uh, here and there. Right, sir. So uh, right. first, I would like to, uh, as, the, as it is showing an obstructive jaundice, I would go for uh, ultrasound uh, abdomen with a color Doppler of the abdomen. 
which in where we can uh, see uh, if there any uh, biliary dilatation is there intrahepatic or extrahepatic see the gallbladder whether in, for any stones or masses look for lymph nodes if any look for ascites for uh, early staging of the disease and uh, even uh, pancreas head of pancreas is uh, seen in uh, some of the cases where there is a, a mass in the head of pancreas with distal cbd obstruction or if there are any uh, 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 bile duct stones or anything which are obstructing the periampillary region so if there are uh, there is an extra hepatic biliary obstruction i would uh, uh, like to uh, without a gb mass uh, gb is ultrasound is very sensitive for uh, uh, gallbladder uh, tumors so uh, we can make make an initial diagnosis of uh, cagb on ultrasound itself if uh, gallbladder is normal and there is a, a extra hepatic biliary dilatation uh, intra and extra both i would i would like to go for an uh, uh, mri with mrct sir so in this case mri plus mrcp showed uh, liver was normal in size uh, with uh, and signal intensity bilateral intrahepatic uh, biliary radicals were uh, uh, along with right anterior and posterior and sectoral hepatic ducts and also the left hepatic ducts were dilated there was an ill defined uh, t1 hypointense t2 hyperintense lesion which had shown diffusion restriction uh, and also a delayed enhancement on post contrast scan in the hilar region in which was involving the confluence right and uh, left hepatic ducts and also a proximal chd the region was also likely infiltrating the left portal vein because it was not visualized few subcentimetric enhancing lymph nodes were there in the periportal region gallbladder in this scan showed normal uh, was normally distended the wall was uh, wall thickness was also normal there was multiple t2 uh, there was evidence of hepaticolithiasis in the left uh, intrahepatic biliary radicals the chd and uh, cbd however they had given a normal uh, 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 dimension with the cbd showing some sludge so they gave uh, their final impression as hilar cholangiocarcinoma uh, bismuth type 4 in view of uh, segmental uh, ductal uh, uh, this thing and uh, uh, involvement of with the involvement of left portal vein and uh, some sub centimetric lymph nodes so in this uh, mrcp you can uh, see the hilar lesion on the film with where the arrow is pointed you can see the segment 2 uh, uh, and uh, uh, segment 4 and uh, uh, segment 3 duct separated uh, on the left side and also on the uh, right side you can see the separation of uh, is Uh, chd uh, followed by uh, interruption in the biliary anatomy followed by segment 8 duct and segment 7 uh, uh, duct right posterior duct on the right have, side we have, we have this picture over there the involvement of the portal vein uh portal vein actually uh, uh, i have a ct which is showing that sir so i had i had not put it in this sir. Okay. We, okay. we were not able to clearly uh, see it in the mrcp uh, mri okay. film sir. we have got a ct done or the ct angiogram involvement is there now would you like to have a ig4 in this case uh the igg4 why we had uh, gone is we uh, we had uh, uh, he is a young male uh, who has come with a suspicious mass uh, and short, uh, short short history male weight loss senior uh, and with this picture yes sir uh, uh, if uh, with the preliminary evaluation if the structure or the uh, mass is uh, uh, no, we don't, don't come to a final diagnosis then igg4 has to be suspected uh, as it can it can masquerade as a, a tumor so will, it, uh, will, it, will, it, will it involve the portal vein the spread will be there that is the problem yes sir that is more uh, portal vein in, involvement is more likely uh, to be uh, malignant can it be in benign disease more likely means it can be in benign disease uh inflammatory changes they they can have portal vein thrombosis no, involvement is, infiltration is not inflammatory changes. infiltration is not uh, usually seen in uh, inflammatory diseases this infiltration basically you yes, see such a uh, adesh sir Manu, there was a qu question uh, sp sorry the one question this of course came from there but they wanted to there was a question given a choice will you do a ct first or an mr first 
That was a question. Given a choice, yes, if for a hilar uh, carcinoma, I would do MRCP MR. with uh, MRI because we can know the biliary ana anatomy and also the uh, vascular invasion. But CT uh, is best for vascular invasion and also uh, to plan for uh, preoperative resection. Resectability is better. Sir. Resection. Resection, if you are yes. planning, then CT would be better. Sir. Yes. Okay, so sometimes you need to do both. One yes, for sir. anatomy, one for resectability. Yes, sir. Okay, that answers that question. Okay, sorry, SP, go ahead. I just my took question, a question. My question from... got passed. <laughs> uh -huh. Never mind. No, mind. Doesn't matter. Right, no, no, no. Okay, go ahead, please. 6,000 we can afford. Chalo. Uh, so, no, before that, before that. Before and, and one more thing, sir. Yeah. Uh, what was, is there a roll of CA 1400. Uh, is there a role for that? So, uh, post operative uh, resection after no, the no, resection. It, this was done pre operative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, role so is, I'm more, about than, this more than 1000, it, uh, it is the uh, more towards malignancy, but in case of cholangitis, also we can find uh, C99 uh, more than uh, 1000, but in uh, the background of mass. Uh, uh, with the C99 elevated. That's why I'm asking about this this patient. Weight of yes. weight loss, short history, extra yes. evidence. Yes. 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 MR, MR now. You have ultrasound so now. Yes, sir. It is and, supportive uh, it also for malignancy. And uh, it also suggests uh, metastatic disease, which mostly is uh, unresectable, sir. So, a couple of points I want to make out here. The first thing that after you your clinical diagnosis uh, and the uh, your basic investment going there's an obstruction to bile duct and bile duct obstruction is at the uh, higher of this thing. Yes, so this MR tells you that uh, there's a multiple ductal involvement. So this is number one, so it means uh, the tumor is looks to be more aggressive. Yes. Number one. Number two, that uh, it only involved portal vein. The more important point I want to make is that uh, there is a hepaticolithiasis. It means what? Uh, it means two things. One, that the bile is super saturated and therefore it's forming hepatocolithiasis or, or a, a, is there a disease which predisposed him to develop a kind of cholangitis? Yes. Asthma? In fact, yes. it's a precancerous condition, Govind. I agree with you. I was going to ask the same question. Oriental and then it's a pre-malignant condition for cholangio. Because so in, in most of the cholangitis, uh, short duration disease, uh, yes, you don't sir. expect the liver to have a multiple stones in the bile duct. If there are multiple yes. stones in bile duct, it simply means that the, the duration of disease is probably a bit longer than what it appears to be. Yes, sir. And uh, because he's symptomatic for the last six weeks only. So that's a jaundice, uh, but uh, disease may be there for a longer period of time. And there's the role of uh, other benign etiology, as Dr. Manu says, other benign etiology, which degenerated into malignancy with time, uh, especially in the young person. Uh, therefore, you, you know, you realize that. Uh, why Dr. Mishra and why Dr. Tandon and also Dr. Saraswath have been raising a point. Why would you consider a benign disease uh, yes, in different cells? Because uh, age was a bit younger. Uh, yes, we, don't, we, we don't want to say that uh, a tumor don't occur in younger age, but uh, uh, it's good to keep a, a wider perspective. I yes. think, Adesh, this is a case where, as Govinda said, where not only the diagnosis is there, you've got a precancerous condition also. Yes. Pointing out in the in this imaging, uh, you know, Adesh, but we didn't uh, have a history, so we didn't know what happened earlier. Could have been, yeah, could have been the, most the, certain there were hepatolysis, hepatolysis. Yeah. and so, six weeks is too less to get a cool. stasis and obstruction. Yeah. So we probed him uh, for uh, any evidence of cholangitis in the past or any uh, yeah, yeah. history of he fever. This thing. It, he denied. Well uh, the is well known to no, no. RPC what, is well known to be silent. Yeah, what 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 we are harping is. You have an open mind and think yes, about sir. it. Yes. It may not be there. Most likely it's not there. Second thing is from Northeast. North is very close to yes. the Orient. Oriental, this thing is yes. very common. Uh, what are the point? Quite a few <laughs> things which hold on towards uh, you, cancer and precancerous condition. Nothing oh, will oh. prove it now. Sir. But yes, what consider presence of hepaticolithiasis, uh, some left yes. lobe atrophy is also there. Yes, yes, and short duration, six short duration. weeks, you don't expect it in a young man. Yes, sir. Uh, but but, CBD CBD stone, but one, one thing, again, if it is six small weeks... Small CBD stone is also there. Yes, yes. Yes, the ones uh, you can see a CBD stone. But in six weeks or four weeks, would you have a trophy of the left lobes so fast? Yes. It must Unlikely. be there from before. It must be there from before. 
So what yeah. Govind was First saying. I mean, pre existing uh, one question from Ajit, you have to take. We are taking questions. Can you point out the stones in, in the MRCP or any imaging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the yes, segment yes. of CBD, one stone yes, is yes. there, and then in the left that hepatic is system, one. Hypo... He wants in the left ductal system. Yes, sir. In the hypo, uh, there are some hypoechoic structures. Yes, yes, that one. Yeah. Yes, sir. In one I of the segmental the drugs, two, you can see. Two ducts, sir. There is another question because of the portal vein thrombosis. Yes, that can explain. Probably that lobe got atrophied. Both Six adequate drain, inadequate drainage and uh, portal vein obstruction. Yes, yes but uh, I think the alone yeah. portal vein again six weeks is a very short time. Short I think time, short time, very short time. Yes, sir. Would you also consider uh, with multiple ductal involvement uh, is the PSC as a one of the differentials? Uh, Dominant structure. He's in the hilum uh, and there is a mass, sir. So PSC, no, uh, PSC with collagen carcinoma, not only well, PSC is also a precancerous condition, mind you. Yes. Ten percent chances are there in PSC. Uh, I thought have... pruritus would have come much earlier than six weeks. Yeah. And what do you say? Uh, intermittent recurrent collagen. Dominant Govin. Pruritus may have come much earlier if there was a dominant structure pre-existing. And these are the guys who get xanthomas and xanthalism because the long-standing process is Yes, and not in a short time, and we don't see very often. What I mean to say that once we talk of RPC, or uh, then you also talk of uh, PSC, and PSC may, may have a uh, multiple site disease uh, involvement of bile ducts uh, at multiple sites, and. Uh, uh, the point I want to make that uh, we should always shouldn't look PSC at the time of when there is a beating. Although we, we I don't, don't say this picture is like PSC, this MRC picture, but we shouldn't expect that uh, we should diagnose PSC only once there is a, uh, a beating appearance. Beating appearance at the end stage disease, which is so classical, is very specific for PSC, and but uh, that's the end stage disease. So we need to pick up a disease uh, early in the course. Even multiple sites of thickening of gallbladder, uh, thickening of bile ducts, and multiple sites stone itself should be sufficient to think of PSC in our differential diagnosis. Right. Okay, let's. Adesh, go on. Can you go ahead now? Right, sir. So what do you want? To, what do you want to do now? So what, what's your what's your question now? So with this, now we have mass lesion. What's your question? And then we proceed the investigation. What is the question? So the mass lesion uh, looks unresectable. So uh, we uh, we can, we have to uh, and pro in view of progressive jaundice uh, in a malignant lesion we have to first uh, look for uh, uh, biliary drainage first. Uh, I would prefer uh, doing a, a, a percutaneous biliary drainage in this case as the lesion is higher up. For if, the, if it, would have, it, would, it would have been a type one or type two, I would have uh, uh, gone by a. With uh, no uh, left lobe atrophy, I would gone uh, uh, via ERCP. But uh, I would like to uh, do a percutaneous uh, 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 biliary drainage because there are uh, we can selectively cannulate the duct and we can avoid the retrograde uh, uh, retrograde uh, tr transmission of the dye, which can cause cholangitis, uh, which is a uh, uh, which the patient is at high risk Can after you an ERCP. mention the studies which have come from India where they have shown that for type 4 PTBD is superior to anything? Uh, you, yes, you know, for the yes. exam going, that's commonly asked since this is a type 4 structure, all the ducts are separated. I'm not able to <laughs> recollect, sir, but ESG guideline uh, they recommend. Uh, ESG for says, I asked specifically from India. Sir, to, I, I cannot recollect, sir. Both Adesh, you, Adesh you said one thing. Have given that. You said that had the left lobe was not a trophy, you had done an ERCP. ERCP or EUS? EUS also was there. We are EUS also it, was a, this thing, uh, if, the, uh, if the left lobe uh, uh, was not a trophy. ERCP, ERCP will not help you. Had the left lobe not been a trophy, then endoscopic ultrasound guided rendezvous or a retrograde placement of stent would have been possible. Yes, sir. Uh, this again, one more point since the image is here. See, bilirubin is now 14, 15. Is it so? 19, sir. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Sir. And look at the bile ducts. Uh, the central bile ducts are distended. Yes, but sir. The, the distance is not, not going towards periphery. Yes, sir. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe of 19, we expect that if there's this obstruction at the center, like the high level, sure. then we expect that all the ducts uh, distal to that, similar to that, should be distended. But here, most of the dilatation is occurring in the central region central of all yeah. the segments. But yes. you go, as, you go, as you go to periphery, they don't distend. Uh, mildly uh, mildly so, distended in the right side, left side or uh, in the right. Uh, the business one above the other. Uh, and that would be interesting to know that uh, is it a pre existing liver disease not allowing the ducts to distend? And this may be again, again one of the other pointer to tell you that this disease may be a longer than uh, Long what it disease. appears to be. Even the left system, you find that only central are dilated and uh, as go Govind, along the periphery to the, of the I liver. I have another explanation for that. Govind, yes, I feel that the six weeks duration Not has only way. allowed it to come up to the central. Give it another six weeks, everything will dilate. Yes, I feel so. One I don't know, six, I may be wrong. Six, six weeks is too long time to, for them to no, dilate. No, peripheral also. I, I think so. Yeah. I think six weeks is too long. And it's the, the more proximal, the more dilation will be. Yes, that is there always. But Govind is asking about distal dilatation vis-a-vis -a, -vis a chronic liver disease. Pre-existing, uh, not chronic liver disease, but uh, some yeah, kind of pre-existing pre liver disease. Prime, prime. I mean, some kind of bile ductal disease. Yeah, disease. like sclerosis. <laughs> it's not a liver Morning disease. Liver, 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 liver looks very free. Chalo, let's move then. Uh, huh. So we did an US. Uh, in the US, the gallbladder was distended and an anechoic. CBD was measuring uh, seven mm. It had a stone at the lower end of CBD. Left hepatic duct was grossly dilated with intrahepatic ductal calculi. Uh, right hepatic duct was mildly dilated. Hilum uh, in our US could not be visualized well, so we couldn't see the mass well. Uh, pancreas and pancreatic duct were uh, normal. A few uh, enlarged lymph nodes were there, but then again, uh, they were banana appearing. And uh, we took an US FNA from the hilar lymph nodes, but the tissue turned out to be a banana lymph lymphoid tissue. So this uh, in the right, uh, right uh, left picture, you can see the lymph node, which is marked. Uh, uh, there is no necrosis. Uh, it, uh, lobulated lymph node is there. Uh, and in the, uh, towards the right, the, you can see the left hepatic duct with the intrahepatic calculi. You can see the po post acoustic shadowing of the calculi there. I think Ajit, this is showing it much clearer as compared to the Ajit had asked that question. Yes, this is showing it much clearer than the MRCP, MRI. though in MRCP yes, it was clear. But no, here MRCP, can... MRCP, we had a, a trophy of the, the ducts were not good. Well seen yeah, this is showing road. with the acoustic with the left uh, road, you shadowing you can make out. Yes, sir. Fine. I think Mana's question is for, yeah, so, then we'll uh, discuss. So if uh, it is a hilar cholangiocarcinoma, if you are suspecting, which of the following is not a criteria for unresectability? For hilar cholangiocarcinoma. So, for this poll question, we have answered atrophy of the unilateral liver lobe with encasement of the ipsilateral portal vein branch. Second is bilateral portal vein branch encasement, bilateral hepatic artery encasement, or type 4 bismuth. Uh, these are the options. Let's see what is our audience thinking. So, we will have a poll. So, uh, till now, majority of our thinking that is atrophy of the unilateral level row with the encasement of the ipsilateral. Yeah, but I have a question. Out of 157, only 100 people are answering. But why is that? Nota, Others... nota, nota. They're using nota. Nota, okay. Also, a lot of faculty member here, as I said. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, uh, Memorial Sloan catering criteria, very well. Documented unilateral ips, and uh, ipsilateral and contralateral, both they say. So, this is classical from that criteria. And I think, Manas, everyone is right. Sir. So, let's go ahead. Slow because gave this three criteria. Okay. Yes, this is answer is uh, atrophy of unilateral liver lobe with encasement of the ipsilateral portal vein branch. 
next dr adis as we got a, a negative uh, from fna uh, uh, and we didn't still have a tissue diagnosis uh, we did a, a, a whole body pet ct it showed the uh, was was if any done yes from the lymph nodes sir lymph nodes okay not from the mass is taken from the lymph node only lymph nodes so fdg amid the ill defined soft tissue mass which was measuring uh, 2.3 into 3 cm uh, which was involving the common hepatic duct primary biliary confluence right hepatic duct left hepatic duct which was causing bilateral up, upstream uh, ihbrd the lesion was encasing the left hepatic artery also uh, it was closely abutting the right hepatic artery and it had lost fat planes with the left portal vein some fdg avid uh, uh, lymph nodes were uh, seen in the periportal region there was no ascites uh, this is a colangio uh, a question adesh for colangio uh, what would be the suv cut off that you would consider to birds uh, malignancy more than 10 sir now here you have got only 5.6 5.6 yeah. so a lot of uh, desmoplastic reaction would be there uh, so that might be the reason for the low scv yeah but, but uh, it is lighting up uh, it is lighting up but statistics or literature says that you must have roughly 10 no yes sir uh, so, this is a pet ct where uh, in the, on the left uh, upper uh, uh, film we can see the lesion yeah that is the lesion and uh, which is closely affecting the right portal vein you can see some segmental uh, uh, ducts there uh, segment 8 and segment 7 uh, on the right picture you can see the left lobe uh, which is atrophied with significant uh, intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation uh, and in the lower picture we can see the uh, fdg avid sorry for the quality of the picture some F fdg avid uh, lesion in the hyla hilum Uh, from what i am seeing are they they are not very bright yellow you know they are just some faint yes. yellow coloration yes, yes. so sv max is 5.6 sir oh. right. i'll just take a break jayanti i'll answer jayanti's question jayanti is put a question what about spice scope and get a tissue jayanti the plus point of spice scope is it is a hilar lesion you can do it the negative with type 4 if you push a lot of air or water or contrast and into one of the undrained segments we are going to the patient is going to go the cholangitis incidence is theoretically 3 to 7 in this it will be 20 times higher because uh, we will not drain all the segments so there is a negative point biopsy will be targeted but visual impression is as important the only negative point is i am sure in this patient with all the ducts separated we will induce cholangitis no, no but do you so need you, the, you, do you need to diagnose right now with so yeah, much of involvement she, of the she duct she wrote for that only she wrote uh, that you don't, you don't need a tissue time. through a spice scope so i said this is the plus and minus you will have to be ready with a ptbd mm -hmm. or uh, whatever us not in this case but something to drain after cholangitis because i feel the incidence will go more than 20% no you are you are, you are risking the patient then yeah okay sorry that was a question which jayanti asked now let's so, see this so if we have done a pet ct here let's ask uh, poll question 5 is sensitivity of pet ct for detection of local uh, lymph node metastasis in perihelar cholangiocarcinoma So option one is uh, this is fifty three to sixty five percent, thirteen to thirty eight percent, seventy to eighty four percent, or five to ten percent. Let's uh, see our poll. so majority are going for uh, that is option 1 but pet is not a good modality to see the localized lymph node that is for the information only yes and let me also tell the students even for hcc pet is not a sensitive uh, pick up rate so you know just blindly if we write hcc pet and not get an answer doesn't rule out hcc 
So, uh, both for cholangio and secondary is just little. So maybe uh, that low yellow color is part because as uh, Adesh said, there is a desmoplastic, very few cells which will take up. Yeah, even, so, even, even an inflammatory reaction over there will give you 5.6. Yes, we'll give uh, 4 or 5. So you have to take the whole clinical picture. This is especially regarding to liver malignancies and cholangiogram. Ajit, air cholangiogram is as bad as cholangiogram. Uh, uh, Ajit, Randir Sood had published that first study and he has subsequently done. I'm not sure if you put in a brush, no anyway, there will be some pressure, the pressure has pressure will do the yeah, thing. push here. And with type 4, there will be definitely some segment which won't come out. So it's a questionable, it is better than contrast, but not absolutely foolproof. Okay, let's go ahead. Can we move on? Yeah. You have the answer now. So uh, it is around 13 to uh, okay. 30. Yeah. So not very sensitive. Oh, we'll I come mean, to the treatment later, I think. No, yes. SP, we'll ask some questions on this. Okay, go ahead. Uh, can I ask one question now? So what the next yes. thing you want to do? So we have a, we know the lesion, but we know the type of lesion. So are this and the uh, Satya, what will be your next step? Certainly we're going to drain the system later, but what will be your next step to resolve the diagnosis and diagnostic possibilities? As said, spike cholangioscopy would be the uh, next uh, this thing uh, uh, to obtain a tissue uh, diagnosis. But again, uh, cholangitis the risk of ascending cholangitis. ascending cholangitis should be considered because this is a type four uh, inoperable uh, uh, tumor. We have to get a tissue diagnosis for uh, giving him definitive uh, chemotherapy. So, so are we sure we are? This is a tumor. Could this be a benign lesion? Because on PET scan. The there is no high uptake, so Sir. it could be more of desmoplastic, as you all you have been discussing. That could be a non tumorous desmoplastic tumorous lesion or maybe inflammatory lesion. Inflammatory IgG4 we can consider, but again, uh, it would be difficult to diagnose without the uh, tissue uh, screening of so, IgG4. So would you do a tissue biopsy doing uh, the US guided maybe ultrasound was negative? So, more attempts uh, either at lymph nodes because. Uh, one yes, test, sir. one 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 attempt giving negative report doesn't yes. allow to yes. either inflammatory or mitotic lesion. Yes. So repeated attempts probably. What Dr. Tannen says that uh, more attempts. Uh, 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 on there are two 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 pointers. One is the hepatic artery is also involved. Vein is involved. So there's a lot of involvement there. The patient is inoperable. That has to be a malignant process. So I agree on that. Just to probe on that, uh, you would you like to... Uh, so you do an endoscopic ultrasound again and take a biopsy again. And Jayanti has put a question. I want both of you to answer. Extra hepatic biliary obstruction, imaging, and bio, uh, PET versus EUS. Where do they relatively stand? EHBO. I think you can start with proximal and distal. You will probably pick up where you can answer that better. Distal, uh, distal uh, cholangio, we can, um, EUS is more sensitive, sir. Correct. Proximal, and you got the advantage of a tissue which is now yes. important in case it's inoperable and you need to give chemo. Yes. And otherwise, uh, Jayanti, uh, cholangio little poor uptake uh, is there. So yes, that you must keep in mind when we see for proximal lesions. And Manu, Manu bhai, how much, you know, it can be a sclerotic lesion and you will not get tissue diagnosis. Yes, correct. You will not. Uh, there are many uh, limitations of both the things, but uh, oh, yes. I really? think the overall picture with help of this, the only and again, a spy will, is, spy why will you not... both are saying repeat US is because in this patient index case, he'll need chemo as the only salvation therapy and for that, at least, invariably, you need a tissue for the uh, oncologist to move ahead, you know. Absolutely. So, and I think that's an important lesson to learn from this case that uh, we'll put in more attempts to do FNA and take a tissue to make a diagnosis. And so that you can uh, give a, a no, I mean, where the steam is undesectable. So local chemotherapy. Again, again with, the, uh, with US, you can target lymph node. It's, it's by, you have you only intradactyl. 
and also maybe that uh, the tumor itself, not only lymph node, but also the tumor. Yes, during what, what can be targeted. Yes. Right. Okay, theoretical questions for both of you. Now, this is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Let us assume we get a tissue. Relative status, I want, are we doing any brachytherapy there? What is the role of radiofrequency ablation? Maybe in general, specific, in this case you can mention. And what about phototherapy? All three, they're all palliation therapy for intrahepatic lesions. Where do you place them? in general and in this case. So you are trying to place iridium? Yes, iridium through an NBT, 192. So have you heard any uh, work done on all the three? Phototherapy? Photodynamic therapy? Yeah, uh, radio frequency ablation, the you would have seen at our center a lot. Yes, sir. And uh, third one, of course, is iridium. None of these have a large uh, uh, trials. Randomized. Trials, uh, we can call uh, call them, still call them as experimental therapies. Retrospective studies have shown uh, uh, progression-free survival uh, in combination with RFA plus uh, uh, SEMS uh, in biliary drainage. And uh, uh, photo, same, same goes to photodynamic therapy and brachytherapy. As of now, uh, where we stand, uh, we cannot uh, recommend uh, them as the standard of care for uh, uh, palliative treatment. In this patient, will any of the three apply in this? I was assuming we have phototherapy and the patient can afford the cost. We are not talking about limitations of cost. In this patient, let's talk index case. Which of the three or none of the three or all the three? RFA can be RFA can be tried in this, sir. Photo uh, brachytherapy, I'm not sure, sir. RFA, where will you do the RFA? Your... You have to have an access. Yes, I don't think you can do with this uh, with all dissociation. I don't think any of the palliation methods. The best you can do is a PTPD then, or then, a then, then, US if you can attempt on the other side and push in stents. I don't think there's anything in this patient we can do. The only thing lacking is a tissue diagnosis still. Yes. Sir. There are a couple of questions and I think they're relevant on the imaging of uh, such patients. Uh, the question from Dr. Kandelwal, uh, Sachi and Dr. Jayanti, all making the same point that once we look at, locate the lesion, uh, the tissue diagnosis remains the center and uh, we do image of either CT, uh, MRI, contrast MRI plus uh, MRCP or EUS or, or the PET scan. So they will have a uh, more, they will tell you more about the extent of lesion, uh, but all patients may not require all these tests. Uh, every patient, certainly this has to be individualized, but more important, the tissue diagnosis remains at the center. And uh, by any means you say resectable tumor or unsectable tumor to so define. Every patient will not require all the tests, but certainly in difficult patients like this, you might have to resort to many investigations. In many patients, patient, no matter what we do, you'll not get a tissue diagnosis. Absolutely. So it, the message must not, must not go but with all the residents and all the participants that every patient has to undergo a CT scan, MRI, US, and a PET scan. But it's only a uh, individual clinical decision. Uh, only one test may be simple CTC. For this patient, a CCT should, should have been, or MRI should have been sufficient to to let us know that this is an unsectable disease. Right. So next. Okay. Now let's we see what, what was done at uh, at the hospital. Show us. So in view of uh, worsening uh, bilirubin, he underwent uh, percutaneous uh, transpapillary uh, drainage. Uh, they cannulated the uh, segment uh, six duct and and eight duct. Uh, you can see the uh, it in the left uh, upper film, uh, which is showing the cholangiogram. The, the opacified right. duct is the sixth duct, and you can see a part of uh, CBD with a small stone uh, below. Also, there is a part which is not op op opacified in the between. Uh, in the next uh, film, you can see the segment eight duct, which is uh, uh, a cholangiogram of the segment eight duct. Uh, six, they have already uh, put in a PTBT catheter. In the below films, you can see both catheters, one in the segment eight and segment six. 
and in the final film uh, uh, both are both have been internalized Post so they were able to pass the mass yes, yes. yes they were able to go across the mass yes they crossed the mass uh, structure and uh, they they had internalized it yeah. but uh, the issue was post ptbd after one day he started developing fever yeah. so, so next so we have done oh, go ahead we have done an ercp uh, rendezvous technique was uh, uh, used uh, papilla was normal both ptbd catheters were uh, visible uh the the both the ptbd catheters uh, were cannulated through the uh, ptbd catheters the ducts were cannulated with the ptbd with the help of ptbd catheters cbd showed mildly dilated uh, it had a stone at the distal end and there was a long stricture in the hilar region uh, the cholangiogram again showed uh, right anterior and right posterior ducts were not communicating left was not at all opacified we did a biliary sphincterotomy we saw pus draining from the uh, this thing uh, ampulla a uh, stone was extracted we uh, took a brush cytology uh, and a biliary biopsy from the hilar structure a 7 cm 10 7 inch to 10 cm double pectoral biliary stent was placed into the right anterior hepatic duct and an nbt was uh, placed into the right posterior hepatic duct in these films you can see uh, this is the sixth uh, uh, segment 6 duct uh, with the ptvd catheter in uh this is the long structure in the uh, right uh, uh, image which you can see uh, which is uh, continuing from the uh, mid cbd to the proximal uh, csd in the second film and in the uh, last film you can see the uh, two st one stent and one nbt which is placed into the right anterior and right posterior hepatic ducts adesh you put you put in dye and you put the left duct was not opacified not opacified sir so something had gone inside the left duct there would have been problem but there still external drainage was, was, no, no, the was already no draining of, there was no scope of drainage yes sir profit yeah. atrophied everything is atrophied i know that's why that uh, jayanti's question i'll answer jayanti has asked ercp ptpd type 3 jayanti is depending on the expertise you have type 4 Uh, mm -hmm. you only ptbd preferred over ercp endosono guided is coming rapidly if there is no if the liver is otherwise normal and not shrunken so type 3 you can have an option depending on your expertise type 4 non ercp drainage i'll say most of the centers do ptbd but if you have got again the expertise you can try an eu as guided also only you can only in the left duct that's right left, yeah, left side that's what right. dilated third or the liver anatomy right is favorable that's what i said provided the liver anatomy is favorable segment 2 or segment 3 can be drained right yeah. and you can put a drain from there also if the stricture is very tight hepatico gastric gastrostomy and they put in a stent also yes, yes and then you can put in a guide wire and they can do a non do yeah. and then put in the tight duct also yes yes so no that was a question i took it up uh, good uh so any other comments on the case the finishing right on time very good govin yes sir i think uh, uh we are two minutes short uh, anything from you i'd like to so, ask them so, a little no, no, about what benign, what, uh, what happened to the pollinators also what Just happened to pollinators for teaching purposes is that okay yes sir okay now benign we have talked about malignant i want you to you have listed out the benign what are the types of benign lesions you get following olt benign strictures we have come theoretical i am not talking of this index case anastomotic site for example we can have sir that's the wrong lesson it can be ischemic also yes i i am not hearing clearly manas can you stop sharing the screen yes sir you said in anastomotic and ischemic Yes, sir. Good. Okay. What is the difference between anastomotic and ischemic, and their response to endotherapy? Ischemic, if it is early within the first week of the post LT, it is not uh, visible for the endoscopy. Sir. Anastomotic site structure. Anastomotic strike structures are localized. They, they are, are at a single the point, and they are amenable to endotherapy. Endoscopy. Single, multiple plastic stents. in rare cases they fully covered but multiple will be enough anastomotic strictures are could be both intrahepatic extrahepatic they are long they are irregular they come under the classification of complex strictures 
25 to 40 percent respond to endotherapy. Sometimes they are an indication for a retransplant. Also. Ischemic, you are talking about. Ischemic. ischemic, sorry, I understand what Sorry, the second one was a complex ischemic. The first and, one is a simple. And if you have a higher HAT, then chances are there. Then uh, gone. Hepatic artery thrombosis, uh, even so worse. You may just need to, so, just to close the case, the first that uh, as Dr. Satya and uh, uh, Dr. Ades has told the two reports are still awaited. The biopsy yes. has been done. So biopsy report will come. And then based upon that, uh, I suppose uh, more treatment will be planned. And second, that IgG4 level is still pending. So we, so at this point in time, the treatment had been done was palliated. But again, more different therapy, whatever uh, possible therapy is, is, is to be done will be based upon the FNA report, which is awaited, and also the IgG4 levels. Uh, which is elevated. Am I right, Dr. Rutanan? Yes. Adresh, one more question. So, one just question. Can, always... can you get samples from the PTBD? If you do a PTBD and, they, and somebody has done brushing from there? Get brush, brushings from the brushing. PTBD samples also. And cholangoscopy guided uh, from the PTBD uh, site also, we can and go that can that also be made. Yes. Yes. Once you have a thick catheter. You have to upgrade the size of the PTBD tube yes. and then once then it burn. matures, you can push in the the short scope, that is yeah. the short spy scope, where the, the classical one is different. I think we can the time to close yeah. this is one o'clock. Thank you, wonderful. So, no, 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 a couple of points just to give a summary. Uh, do you want to give summary, Dr. Tandon or Dr. Mishra? Uh, learning points uh, in this case. No, bhai, it's your case. Okay, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's uh, from the, the learning points for students first is, from the history, do your best to differentiate inter and extra. And if you are not able to, as we ask in the exam, a syndromic diagnosis, you say that based on this matter, I cannot really differentiate whether it is uh, intrahepatic cholestasis or extrahepatic cholestasis. That is very important. Don't commit. And always, always, to, always have a differential you know, diagnosis. Yes. So that is the first uh, learning point. Then the second learning point is there are five of benign and malignant by statistics, 72 to 75% are malignant. The rest are benign. You must know there are five malignant causes Four they listed the fifth one I pointed out. We have discussed in detail where pain is available, which is painless and statistically, which is the commonest in your area. If there is a precancerous condition that is existing in this patient, I feel there was, then all the more that lesion will come up higher, like a cholangio. If there was a PSC, then it comes higher up. That is on the malignant size, uh, side. On the benign side, mal many other things, but post-operative chronic pancreatitis and then the miscellaneous, and don't forget tuberculosis in our country. PSC. Innumerable times we have, uh, you know, malignant, malignant, and then frank, caseating pus from the lymph node drops out, you know. So don't keep that in mind. Fourth learning point, which is the imaging technique that you should appropriately set, and that was raised that in certain one or two may be more than enough. You need not have to go to multiple imaging techniques uh, to establish both the diagnosis and the resectability criteria if it is malignant. Fifth, if it has gone beyond three or four, depending on the expertise of your center, this is now malignant. Which one would you like to use for a drainage procedure to alleviate the symptoms? Mostly jaundice, pruritus will be higher, sometimes cholangitis. So PTBD versus ERCP, if you have US expertise, that also comes into the picture. So these are the important things that you should carry when you leave the hall that you will leave very shortly. Unless you have any point to make. Uh, and, uh, all points mentioned by Manu sir, we have to keep all those things in mind, open our mind. Uh, suddenly don't jump into extra hepatic biliary obstructive and this because at times it is very difficult to differentiate intra hepatic uh, cholestasis also. So uh, those are the points. And in an learning from me from the expert also. 
in the in the examination never 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 know the diagnosis once you know the diagnosis you only hover around that so you you know then yeah. you can't think outside the box correct biased biased, biased. your uh, answers become biased I okay, think with this, I think we... with this, we close today's session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Saraswat. He has to leave early uh, because of his flight. Then Dr. Misra and Dr. Tandon is a wonderful case. To, and so casing the, the nuances and difficulties in making a diagnosis. And every time, we are no, not able to make a diagnosis, but more important that how best you approach a patient and to a logical conclusion. Here, still, this patient is a wonderful case to showcase that point that despite doing all the investigations, they're still waiting the etiological diagnosis. So keeping the options open, not doing all the investigations in every patient uh, is, uh, is very important that uh, we should develop our expertise that which test will give me the most, most uh, required information to take me a treatment decision. That should be our, uh, our habit and that should be our practice. Uh, uh, thank you, Adesh and uh, and, and, and uh, Satya for a wonderful discussion. I think both of you have been uh, excellent. Uh, am I right, uh, Dr. Yes, Dr. Yes, of course. Yes, they're good good. students, they're hardworking students, and this is, I didn't participate at all with them because I wanted to, to be fresh. And, I mean, oh. they're very spontaneous and very, very yes. uh, fluent, very fluent and, and to the point, not, uh, yeah. not going uh, around the things, but uh, to yeah. the point. Well so that's, that's a yeah. wonderful, uh, I mean, yeah. presentation by both of you. So many congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Manas, for again taking this, taking us through this case. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Govind, for sharing so your time and afternoon every Sunday. Yeah, and uh, it's a privilege to be a part of ISG, yes. Govind. Certainly, sir. This has been a wonderful experience for all of us, and we know the power of uh, the 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 uh, virtual teaching, uh, virtual classes that we can thank, take. Thanks to Govind. Whole country, whole country, and uh, we have a faculty from each part of the country, and each faculty for last. Uh, the 11 classes have been superb. I think it has been a learning experience for me because I joined each one of them uh, along with many other uh, participants. So I learned the most uh, probably from these classes. Uh, and uh, we again welcome you for the next class or next master class next Sunday. I think we'll do one or two more before we close. Uh, the next uh, Sunday, we will again wait for you for one of the master class. Same time, 11.30. So till then, Bye. Well have, done. A have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you sir. Keep safe. Keep healthy. Bye. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you, uh, the tech team. Thank you. Thank you.